I'm Rob and today we're at the Castle Inn in Rowlands Castle. So you may have noticed that there are no signs up or anything to say it's the Castle Inn. That's uh, because they're all being replaced at the moment. They're going to be replaced, brand new ones, and the pub painted. Uh, so that's an old pub, it was built in 1753. Um, but then the railway came along and they didn't want to lose the pub so it was demolished brick by brick and in 1853 it was moved here a few yards away from where the railway is so that they could save the pub and just how close the railway is it's uh, it's just here it was a notorious haunt for a gang of smugglers as well apparently Anyway, let's uh, go under the arches and take a look at Rowlands Castle. So this is Rowlands Castle Village Centre and it's named after a castle that was erected just after the Norman Conquest and it was erected just over the back of the Londis shop there. But by the 15th century the castle had all but disappeared. Um, there were some groundworks and there were bits of wall left but then the railway came along in the mid 19th century damaged it some more and then there was some quarrying so there's really nothing to be seen over there so being so close to Portsmouth and the English Channel it was very important for D-Day here as well the railway meant that lots of tanks and troops and all sorts of things could be unloaded ready for the invasion so on May the 22nd 1944 King George VI uh, took the salute by troops parading by on their way to D-Day and there is a stone in the village somewhere to commemorate it but it's not en route in fact this isn't en route either I've just dipped into the village to get a little bit of local history anyway back en route we're going under the railway arches and we're going to look for the monarch's way so we take this left arch Good morning going to leave the pub behind and walk away from the arches down here so you take the path opposite this lovely semi-detached cottage and we head into Stansted Forest and we continue straight uphill So I'm guessing maybe the same wind that took the pub sign down it might be the same wind that brought this tree down. Look at that. Pulled up the root ball. Brought the tree crashing down over the path. So that's Stansted House in the distance. More about that later. But this is Stansted Park. And it's 1,800 acres of woodland and parkland. It's in the Doomsday Book and it was used for hunting and timber growing. In fact the royals love their hunting and uh, notable royals that have been here Henry II, Richard I, King John, First Queen Elizabeth, Edward VI, George III, the Queen Mother and Princess Anne. So at the Kissing Gate we cross the road in front of this gatehouse to go into North Cooper's Wood. And we continue straight on up the drive through the woods. So don't be tempted off, just keep going up the drive. Ignore the house, keep following the Monarch's Way, which is along a tarmac drive to the left. And at this point, we turn off onto the gravel.
just before the track goes back into the woods again, on your right, look out for this little gap in the bushes. And there is a right of way sign hidden in there, look. And we've got to go through there. Ooh, a doop a doop. And cross through what was the crops? It looks like a fairly well defined path across there. And the house is off to the distance on the right. So we're across the other side of the field. Going straight on, there should be a path through the corn on the cob over there. Ghost stories on the right, haunted houses. To horror films in front of us. It's always how a horror film starts, isn't it? So here we go. Don't come out of this alive, mother. You know I love you. So, what seemed like ages, but thankfully wasn't that long. Come out of the corn, onto this footpath, into this little bit of scrub. Oh, flipping heck. I spoke too soon. Here we go again. <laughs> so, we're out of the corn once more. You can see the house over the corn that way. And there's a track here. Take that track and we're going to head round to the right where that building is. Again, the signs are well hidden in the bushes, but when you get to this house, you turn right on this track. So we've got a style to our left. Our way goes straight on along the restricted byway, and then shortly on the right, aha, at the sign here, we plough off across the fields, oh no, not towards some more corn. identically across the other side of the field. Another kissing gate and a nice signpost that we can see which we follow right. And we come out in the main car park for the house which is a visitor attraction. It's, it's nice, they've got light railway, they've got tea rooms, they've got a garden centre, maze, the house itself, all sorts. Okay, and there's the entrance there. I think it's about a tenner. It's a good family day out. And they also do events in there as well. Concerts and plays and things. But we're crossing over the road. And going up the hilly mound. This is the main entrance. Uh, the first house was built at Stansted Park in 1591. Elizabethan building. And it was rebuilt in the 17th century. And... Uh, then a bit later on, and then in 1900, the current building burnt to the ground. Uh, but it was rebuilt in 1903. Uh, it's Grade 2 listed. Um, but in 1983, it was taken over by a charitable trust. And as I say, it's now open to the public. You've got all sorts of things to supplement the estate's income. Tenant farming, the garden centre, the Orangery Cafe, farm shop. Uh, so, very nice place to visit. It's so at the bottom of the hump, corner of the map. We turn left on this road almost immediately right, should be a footpath over to the other wood. Can't see it, but we'll have a look. So on their map, there should have been a footpath across the field there, but there's not, so I guess they've updated it. 
without changing the map. So you don't need to go over the hump with the view of the garden centre. Just continue on the road out of the car park and cross right over and there's a footpath here that goes to the right and that sign is ages old so the Ordnance Survey must have been very slow at updating the map because this obviously replaces the footpath that's on the map because this one isn't. Anyway, we'll follow it down here. So we carry straight on and we bend around to roughly follow the line of the path that's marked on the map. Roughly, roughly. There's been a lot of changes here by the looks of it. That field had a sign to say conservation area, which is obviously why they changed the route of the footpath. As I say, it must have been some time ago because the, uh, the gates and the signs and that look quite old. So pretty soon come to a double set of gates and we cross the road and we go down towards Home Farm and uh, there's also a sawmill down there. So that's some lovely colour in these wild flowers. And we've got a field of sunflowers up there too. Well, Chickingham Palace is a bit short on eggs. And even the three cucumbers are gone. So, just after Chickingham Palace, sign pointing to the right goes down through the middle of the farmyard. Hello boy. So at the end of the farmyard. And we're going down where Trev is. And on the right you got the farmhouse. And we continue along the path. So I'm filming backwards the way we've been because there's a bit of a wind brewed up there. I didn't want it to sound like a supersonic jet taking off. So it's very pretty. Let's see if we can get a shot up here. Oh, there comes the wind. Oh no. So, before you reach Horse Pasture Farm, you turn right up this path. And this is the Sussex border path, so Hopefully we're back in Hampshire now. Most of the walk has been West Sussex. Zebras. Or if you're watching from New Zealand, I'll translate that. That's zebra. So, have we got any farmers watching this? What on earth is this? Thought for a minute that there had been fire gone through here, but it looks like a, like a pea pod, but it looks like nuts in there. Is it peanuts? What is it? Interesting. As we come away from the, I don't know, peanut field, is it? Not absolutely sure. Come out onto the main bit of parkland up to the house. So we saw this cross on the way up from the other side of the path. We're just about to retrace our steps now back to the pub. And it commemorates a chap called Pilot Officer Clement. And he uh, flew for the Royal Canadian Air Force and tragically was killed when he crashed his typhoon at the top of the, uh, the top of the drive. So you recognise the big grass driveway, the Stansted house at the end. So we've just come out of the path on the right and we're now a turn left, there's another path ahead through the woods that take you back to the same place. But we're retracing our steps back down here where we walked at the very start of the walk. And we look for the plaque commemorating Pilot Officer Clement. The chap told us that he uh, came flying down here in his typhoon, taken off from Funtington and crashed at the end here, presumably into the trees. He did say there was another plaque somewhere, but we don't seem to be able to find it. So we failed miserably finding that plaque. So just retrace our steps through the woods and back to the pub. This is where we leave Stansted Park 
on Stansted Forest. Uh, you can recognise the lovely semi-detached cottages. As you turn left onto the road, head down towards the railway arches and eventually the pub. So Trev's gone inside to get the the refreshments. I'm sitting out in a nice little garden in the sunshine. Very nice. So that was a nice trip around Stansted Park there and Stansted Woods. Um, it's about five and a half miles, maybe a shade more. Lovely walking. Uh, we cheated a bit, most of it is in West Sussex, although Rowlands Castle, as you know, is in Hampshire, so it's a Hampshire pub walk. Anyway, if you enjoyed it, please think about liking and subscribing, and uh, maybe I'll see you on the next one. Cheers! So, thankfully it wasn't too far going through there. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't done that in years.